Welcome back to RGR Football. I'm Ryan. This is me going rogue on the Kansas City Chiefs and the entirety of the NFL. And today, in this film room, we're going to take a look at the defense, some of the good things, and one or two of the bad things, because this team has been up and down as of late. And they really need to get this together before they try to move on to where they're going next. There is a lot to see here. And today, if you're not part of the channel yet, make sure you click the like and the sub and the bell notification so you get an idea of exactly what's going on. You want to know when it happens. The memberships are open as well, too. And if you want to get a little bit more inside look, go ahead and click on those. Now, today, the Chiefs were in a position against the Tampa Bay Bucks that they had to get something done. This was a formidable team with a formidable defense, and they had to do some unique things on defense of their own to try to combat that. Now, the Chiefs offense got off to a good start, but yet it wasn't as high-scoring a game as we have seen in weeks past. So it was up to the defense to try to corral the comeback on Tom Brady's part. And we're going to start right here on what became a big play, and I really want to emphasize this one because it is about teamwork. The play goes in a certain direction, we'll see here in a second, and all notoriety and credit should go to Bashad Breeland for making this play on the end, especially against who we're going to see here, uh, a smaller receiver, one that actually has the advantage in terms of flat-out speed, but certainly in terms of short area quickness as well. And despite that mismatch in terms of physical ability, Bashad plays this ball beautifully, knowing what's coming. And that is the opposite side. His partner in crime, the leader of the secondary, is going to have a big influence on this. And this is why Teron Matthew is the, the cover man for this particular video because he's influencing things when he's not getting his hands on the ball, and that's important as well. I'm going to slow this down so we take a quick run through it the first time. And what you're going to see is that right off the bat, four-man rush also sending a linebacker. And while the receivers are trying to get a release here on Sneed and Breland, you see Matthew coming as well. Now you have Rojo in the backfield trying to make a block too, and he does make an attempt. But this is what stands out when you try to see exactly what Duran Matthew does because it's difficult. It's not something that's simple. It is about making that guy miss. And the way that he's able to attack inside is really, really important. And his rush starts here about even. Rojo's coming to meet him here in the backfield. And he's just able to plant his foot as he comes outside. That's really what it is. We're going to slow this down a little bit more so you can see as it happens. Plant that outside foot and come back inside. Now, that's nearly a hold on the running back's part as well, but it clearly is a move that he has rushed like this before, does get to Brady, gets his hand in his face, and that helps what Bashad is dealing with here. When you see the point of contact, nearly the point of release, right here as Brady's winding up to throw, you can see at the top of the screen, the Bashad is still... Pretty good shape. Now, there's there's a common thought that once a receiver has an outside shoulder here that he's got room to the sideline, he can actually accelerate and get away. And Bashad does have a little bit of a disadvantage speed-wise. And as the ball comes out, you see that gap has now shortened where they're shoulder to shoulder. And that's okay because Bashad knows what was coming in the pass rush. They actually sent seven. We'll see in the reverse angle in a second. And he gets his head around right here. Now, this is something that he can teach the rest of the young DBs. Get your head around as early as possible because now you're playing the ball where the man in is not as important you can keep your eye focused on that and you see here as the ball comes into focus he's actually in great position because of the pressure produced a slight underthrow, and he's there to take the ball away that doesn't happen without everything else that happened in this play to get him in that position he's well aware of that and makes the most of it when we look again here as they steady up we have the, the standard four-man front. You have Snead locked up here, and you have Bashad just outside with uh, the small nickel with Hitch and Sorensen up in the box. This is Juan Thornhill, whose legs you can see right here. And as they roll forward, it becomes very evident. Yes, they're sending the front four, but they're sending Hitch. They're also sending Matthew, and that's where it is. Right here, that inside stab, and he's by him. This is, again... A hold right there. That should have been flagged. It would have been, you know, dissolved anyway because of this play by Bashad Breeland. A big time play that takes more than just the guy covering to produce. 
And now we see the second play that Troy Matthew actually made a big impact on. And clearly, this is the one that he got his hands on. This is a similar play, but different in specific ways in that they're not bringing quite as much pressure, but the pressure is definitely involved with how this play comes off. What you see here is Tyron up top with Juan in the split cover two look. And despite being lined up on what is uh, an eligible receiver in here, He's actually going to play kind of a robber spot. And this is LJ Sneed adapting to what he did prior to his injury. He's been in the nickel since then. He did speak to the media and he is specifically training in the nickel now. And this ability is something that we've seen from Tyron Matthew in the past where he can play true head up on a slot receiver as a nickel and then fade into this robber role. This has an effect as well. And you're going to see that the pressure here is going to come in a similar way, but from the opposite side. So it looks here like it could even be man. Brady doesn't get much of a read pre-snap, and that actually helps the Chiefs because they're wandering, and right here, there was no motion, there's no nothing. Now it could be a straight cover two. It could be something more exotic, but you have Tyron, Juan, and Sneed here all in space. That looks pretty good. What's going on, though, is the ball's delivered quickly, and he's trying to get it out here just as Hitch is coming out to meet it. The ball sails on him a little bit, and now you have one receiver occupying one defender uh, who probably was not the best to try and outleap and grab this ball in the first place, and now you have Bashad and Tyron in position to make that play. I'm sure he wanted to score here. We can talk about the run back another day, but that comes down to the scheme, and we're going to have to get used to what we see in the reverse angle as well. And the reverse angle is just this. We're going to get half to used to having to see this, and that is not just straight pressure, not a four-man rush. At this point, Steve Spagnuolo has decided that he does have to generate pressure by bringing somebody else. That means more exotic zones. It means putting players in position to make plays where they have to travel a little bit, where you're not in lockstep with the guy that you're covering. It puts a little bit of pressure on the secondary to play in space. But when you bring one, two, three where a space where only two guys can actually block them. Uh, the center's actually moved over here towards the far side where it's really a one-on-one. -on -one. It's a five-on-five -five rush is what it is. And as they come through, the tackle does what a lot of tackles are trained to do and take the inside man who seems to be more dangerous. And this is Brady Bach stuck behind the sky cam here that we can't really see. But he realizes, he feels Frank bearing down on him and has to get the ball away early. And you see... Just how much Tom Brady moves his body when he realizes this. Instead of stepping through and forward to deliver this ball, he's actually falling backwards. Watch his feet right here as he sees that Frank is coming down at him. He pivots on this right foot, not driving anywhere, and that left foot just stays put. This is all arm. That's why it sails, and you can see He's not even really planning either foot. He's turning away to avoid the collision. And this is what happens with older quarterbacks. This is certainly what happened and helped the Chiefs. As they bared down on Tom Brady, got this ball in the air, and that's what allowed Tyron Matthew to make the play. Now, those are just a couple of the big plays. There are others. I'll try to put another snippet or two together for you, but that's going to be it for today. These are the plays that make the difference when you're trying to go on a run-it-back tour and they're going to have to have more of them. So if you're new to the channel, make sure you like and sub and hit the bell notification now so you know what happens next because we certainly want to know what's happening next. This is a great play. They're going to have to have more of them. Look for this in the future. And thanks for watching today. We'll check you next time. Thanks for watching this video from the team at RGR Football. Click these videos to see more and subscribe to RGR Football.